Welcome everybody to Old School Gamers. Today, we're going to do a game review for the light gun genre. Molerat Digital Art has come out with a new light gun game and has graciously sent us a copy to review and give our thoughts on the channel. Also, I had a very limited time to do this review, so among other things, I was not able to dial in my cursor, you know, my crosshairs very well, so my accuracy might be a little bit off, so keep your laughter to a minimum, <laughs> as I was also having to deal with a little bit of jitter. But with that, let's get started. The game is called Bang Bang Pew Pew, and what a bullet accuracy, uh, judgment, and speed tester this thing is. It packs a lot of mini games into one. If you like classic arcade shooters like Police Trainer or Time Crisis, or even if you're like an old school gamer like me, and you love console games like Gumshoe for Nintendo, then you're definitely going to love Bang Bang Pew Pew. It takes some elements from these games and adds a modern twist to them, and I think you'd be pleasantly surprised to some of these uh, mini games. So Bang Bang Pew Pew is going to be a PC game released on Steam, and it works with major light guns such as Gun for IR and the Send-In, which I'll be using for today's video. So here on the main page, the game loads up to a very user-friendly menu with some options. So you can set your resolution with refresh rate, depending on which you uh, display you're going to be using. You can also set your video quality depending on the computer and GPU that you have. You can turn your crosshairs on and off. Uh, they even added an ability to enable uh, colorblind mode, which is very cool. And of course, you can turn the music on or off. The main menu has two options, single player, which we're going to cover today, and hot seat, where you can alternate turns between you and another player for some head to head competition. Inside the single player, there are three modes of play. You can select a challenge, where you'll actually play one of the mini games of your choice, arcade mode, where you get to play four mini games, one from each category, and random mode, when you just can't decide what to play and it picks one for you. And this works really well for me when I want to play something and I have no idea what it is. Love it. The mini games are broken down into four different categories. So you got scenario, speed, judgment, and accuracy. And each one of these categories has several sub games in them with descriptions and they also give you a small video playing to demo the gameplay along with some additional instructions. So let's dive in and look at the first category, Scenario. We're going to start with Protect the Runner. This is a nicely upgraded and much more modern version of Gumshoe. But now you have to jump the person with the button press while also shooting oncoming enemies to protect the runner. Timing the jumps while having accurate shots is a must. Next on the list is Getaway. This is a very cool racing game, and it kind of reminds me a lot of Yoshi's Safari for Super Nintendo. You have a third person view of the car, but are trying to keep the car and track clear of dangerous items. I mean, in this case, they got roadblocks, mines, and other cars that are trying to run you off the road. Very quick reactions and accuracy are definitely required to do well here. Next under scenario is curling, and I didn't think I would enjoy this one, but I honestly loved it. Curling is a nice touch on the sport, as you now get to shoot the stone down the ice path. It's a slower paced game, and it's really nice when you need to take a break from all the bullet mayhem. I mean, you know, accuracy is definitely a must, as you can also cause the stone to actually spin, you know, based on how far from the center of it that you shoot. It's really cool and enables some of the physics that are part of the game. Last but definitely not least in scenario is Taking the Town. This is pretty much a first person shooter on rails. There is no duck and cover though like Time Crisis. It is shoot or be shot. So accuracy and speed are critical here and you'll have to practice to get this one down. It's very fun but it's very tough. So that does it for scenario. Next on the list is the category speed. And first up, blast everything. 
This game pits you in a warehouse full of targets. And if you're in the mood just to shoot anything and everything and get your anger monkey out, I tell you what, go right to blast everything. Because you get an auto shotgun and all you need is a happy trigger finger ready and this is definitely a game for you. Great stress reliever. Custom Targets is an interesting one as it allows you to customize the actual picture of the target and also the friendly pictures to whatever you want. The FAQ even specifies what folder to put the target and friendly in. I tried this but was not able to succeed so I just played with the default. But it does show that they're willing to create new experiences you know, with this ability for customization. It's pretty cool. Juggling definitely put me back in the days of Trick Shot on Hogan's Alley, but this time the physics and graphics have been upgraded to a modern standard. I mean, keep this bucket in the air as long as you can and see if you can actually reload before it hits the ground. Spin the targets is one I haven't really seen before, as the physics are really pushed into the gameplay. So what happens, the target spins faster and it gains momentum when shot, and the faster you keep them going, the more points you get. Definitely one of the harder ones, as it requires a lot of speed and a very high level of accuracy. Bullet Hell I have to admit my brain did not process what my eyes were seeing at first, as this one soon became one of my favorites after. The first time I played this, the targets came out, I froze like a deer in headlights and it took me several attempts for me just to focus and pick targets. Good luck taming this beast, this one is just deathly hypnotic but very fun to play. Scatter targets, it puts you in a shooting range where the targets will randomly appear from about a 10 yard interval. It definitely requires a high level of accuracy and speed but it's a great one to warm up with, especially if you're going to try Bullet Hell. What a name, Iron Balls. I mean, it basically starts you at the bottom of a ramp, and you have a ton of Iron Balls coming at you, and you must use both accuracy and the physics to shoot these Iron Balls that are plummeting towards you. This is one of my favorites, as it's a simple concept that just is really fun to play. And as you can see, Bang Bang Pew Pew comes with a lot of mini games that challenge every part of your light gun skills. So let's cover the last two categories and I'll give you my final thoughts overall on the game. So the next category is Judgment. And first up is my all time favorite of the mini games so far called Clear the Platform. In this one, you must solve the puzzle with your perceived physics and use bullets to carry out those visions. So it's a great combo of both, I would say, accuracy and judgment, of course, that I thoroughly enjoyed. And I think it will have the high replay or highest replay value, you know, for those that enjoy this kind of game. Color call is a great change up. I mean, it adds an audio call that you must hear and then you identify and shoot the color that you hear. So the patterns are mixed and varied, so judgment, speed, and accuracy are all tested here as well. Very fun. Next up on the list is card matching. Now, to be honest, I didn't like card matching because my brain couldn't remember any of the cards. <laughs> it has nothing to do with the game. And I was almost 100% sure that on a few occasions, none of the cards up on top match the ones on the bottom. I don't know. Either way, this one is a brain teaser for sure and will give loads of fun for anyone up to the mental challenge. Shoot the Impostor! Now, Shoot the Impostor is the ultimate judgment game. You must find the one holding the weapon, else you might be shooting the poor guy who looks like he's about to fix your loose cabinet. Take aim, choose fast, and the imposters are out there. Good luck finding them. Next on the list is poker. Now, playing poker with a light gun will definitely bring a smile to your face. You must quickly decide and shoot what cards you want to get. Whether you're trying for a pair, a flush, or a full house, doesn't matter. It's all up to you. 
Points rack up as the time winds down, and this one is definitely a fun one to play for any card player or not. Ready, set, go. This one will definitely test your reaction time and visual intelligence, much like Imposter. But this time, there is a quicker time limit as the targets disappear behind like a protective wall if you don't react in time. Very fun game. So that rounds out all of the Judgment group. Next and last is Accuracy, started off by Pendulum Plates. This game actually confused me a couple of times with the instructions. One time it said don't shoot the gas cans, um, but it only had gas cans to shoot. So <laughs> other than that, this mini game is intense and it places a lot of emphasis on the physics and it will test your accuracy and ability to determine what targets to shoot. Very cool. Clay shooting at its best. Pole. Two pigeons, two bullets, may the best shooter win. Enough said. Next up is sniping, which allows you to zoom in wherever you are looking with a simple button press. Targets are moving in a circular pattern, so you gotta be really accurate while you're zoomed in. And I really like this ability as it gives a new twist to the standard light gun game where zooming in to see your target is not always a common option. Ballistic Skeet Shooting. So like the real skeet pole, uh, but in this one you'll need to learn to lead the skeets by a little bit or you're going to be scoring goose eggs all day like I did. <laughs> the scenery and audio cues, I mean they add to the overall experience and make this mini game a lot of fun and I really enjoyed this one. And last but not least, ballistic sniping. So it's kind of like the skeet shooting, the ballistic one. You're gonna need to untrain your eyes. Okay, don't shoot at the bullseye, shoot just outside the target because you're also gonna have to consider, you know, bullet drop among other things. They really enhance the game uh, by implementing a lot of the physics. So this one gave me the most trouble, especially on the zoom targets. It is a lot of fun, but definitely not for the faint of heart. -wee. So that is a lot of mini games. And as you can see, they covered a lot of different territory and I really enjoyed reviewing this game. So I want to give you the good, the bad after playing this for a little bit. So let's get to the good as there is a lot of it. First off, this is a brand new light gun game for your PC and you will get a 30%, yes, 30% launch discount if purchased on the day it launches. Very cool. Number two, it's a unique and great looking game and it has a lot of modern and retro feel to it. I mean, it just brings elements of some of the classic games to the modern PC, you know, for your light gun game genre. It's very hard to find. Number three, there are tons of mini games that test your Scenario, speed, judgment, and accuracy. I really liked it. The wide variety was great. So you think you're the sharpshooter of the West? Number four, Bang Bang Pew Pew will definitely test your skills. There are so many games that take a lot, a lot of practice to master, but they're a lot of fun. So I really like that. Last but not least, number five, I like the fact that this comes with an FAQ and they try and answer some of the questions that might come up you know, along with a method to actually contact the team if you have additional questions or issues. So I like that. This shows that they're definitely interested in the future of the game and making sure that it's successful. All right, let's go over the bad. So the bad isn't actually too bad. One thing I would recommend is that some of the games need a little bit of polishing. Example, like in Protect the Runner. If you miss a jump or you get hurt or you die or whatever, and your runner responds, the enemies are still on the screen, and if they're in a position to hit your runner as he spawns in, the, you know, you may just die again, and that can be frustrating, and has nothing to do with your skill level, just something that I think, you know, it'd be nice to have a, a free spawn with the screen cleared out or something like that. The next pad is also pretty minor, nothing major, uh, but I noticed that the crosshairs blend in and are hard to see at times, especially on snipe and blast everything. The quick fix to that is of course just to take the crosshairs off, 
but it would be nice to have a different color, you know, or something that's a little bit more defined and contrasts a little bit better with some of the background. And the last one on the bad list. I couldn't find a way to do a retry or replay, you know, once I'd completed a mini game. So I had to go all the way back, go select a challenge, go to the category, cycle over to the, you know, the one I was just playing and start it all over again. So I don't know if that's a feature that's missing or I just don't know how to do it, but it wasn't intuitive. Well, that wraps up today's review of Bang Bang Pew Pew. Thanks for joining us on this review and hopefully this has shed a little bit of light on the game and all that it has to offer. Knowing the good, the bad, would I still recommend this game? And I can quickly say absolutely. These issues are minor or easy to fix and not really any showstoppers. The important thing is um, about any game, you know, do you still enjoy it? And I did and I wanted to keep playing more. So with that, we're going to wrap up with this video, guys. Thank you so much for joining us, and I will see you next time.